Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today you will witness the promotion of Lieutenant Colonel Tammy Lynn Cully to the rank of Colonel. We are honored to have with us our presiding official for today's ceremony, Colonel Constantine A. Leon, Director, National Guard Comptroller, Financial Management. Sharing this special occasion today are many family, friends, and special guests. We are extremely honored to have in attendance Lieutenant Colonel Cully's family, which includes her husband, Lieutenant Colonel Mike Cully, her children, daughter Michelle Hodge and her husband Daniel, daughter Callie Lawrence, and son Dylan Cully, and her parents, Charles and Barbara Beavers, brother Chuck Beavers, and his wife Melinda, and we also have her sister, Darlene Foreman, watching online from her deployed location overseas. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Cully would also like to welcome our special guests. Major General Kendall Penn, Adjutant General for the State of Arkansas. <laughs> Brigadier General Thomas Crimmins, Commander, Arkansas Air National Guard. Brigadier General Retired, Roger McClellan and his wife, Patricia. <laughs> Colonel Paul Hara, Director of Staff, Arkansas Air National Guard and his wife, Elizabeth. <laughs> Colonel Retired, Christopher Montanero and his wife, Martha Ann. <laughs> and Mr. Ed Summers and his wife, Virginia, or his grandson. Mr. and Mr. John Kendricks and his wife, Von Seal. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the entrance of the official party and remain standing for the singing of the national anthem by Master Sergeant David Smith from the 189th Airlift Wing, Arkansas Air National Guard, followed by the invocation by Pastor John Kendricks. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose bright stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the balls bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star span Precious heart that serves 
her country with all of her being. We thank you for men and women who dedicate themselves in such a measure. We ask your blessing upon, Father, this particular time and event today that we would acknowledge you as the giver of all life, the giver of love, and the blesser of this generation. It's through the powerful and mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We bless you. We thank you. Amen. 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 Thank you, Master Sergeant Smith and Pastor Kendricks. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. It is now my distinct pleasure to introduce to you the presiding official for today's ceremony, Colonel Constantine Leon. Good morning, everybody, and I should say really good afternoon. But the fact of the matter is, before I start, I do want to take a moment. Welcome, Major General Penn, Major General Clemens, Colonel Hara. To have leadership here says a lot. Very appreciative. Thank you. When we do things like this, the one thing I'm very mindful of is I talk to the family. I'm going to talk a lot about some of Tammy's accomplishments and what she has done. What's important to note on all that, though, is with those accomplishments comes a tough thing to mention. Comes time. The time that is spent away from all of her loved ones here. And I know that, and I'm aware of that. And I thank Mike for you to know that we are very appreciative of what the time she gives us. It's never easy. And I know all the loved ones are here, and it takes away from you all as well. So it's important to note before I start, we're mindful of it, we're grateful of it, and there's going to be more challenges that we're going to ask more of her time. And that's what makes us special about being in the military. So having said that, I really want to make everyone know I've had a lot of years working with Tammy. Started back in 2004, we were comptrollers. We got to meet one another years ago, just sitting in workshops back in the day where we would come to NGB and sit in a workshop and we'd take three to 400 people. We'd all be sitting out there and listening to questions of what were being said. And I will tell you, Tammy was one of them that I guaranteed you the four days we were having these workshops, she was raising her hands, asking questions. But what I took note of this was her questions were about how do we make the enterprise better? Not necessarily just taking care of her unit. It was about, hey, what's the bigger picture here? We were both young captains. I was very aware of comments like that. And so what I really wanted to mention, and from that standpoint of just her professionalism, she knew how to get work accomplished. She was always willing to put that extra mile into a task. So then time goes on, we become a little more seasoned in the comptroller world, and we join this thing called the Comptroller Advisory Board. And it's a, a good group of five comptrollers that take on the responsibilities that the director needs help on. And there's just so much going on. And what I found out with Tammy was that she was one that was always willing to take on a challenge. And back how we were doing these workshops when we would throw all these people together, we decided to change the way we did business in financial management. And we decided to break up our work to where the subject matter areas would get hands-on training every day. And instead of bringing people in to hear all the topics, our career field is so specialized. We need that specificity to make it happen. She took on an area that was very hard in the pay world back in the day then. But the point of the matter was she dug in. It was successful. And as the years went on, that is the same format that we are doing today, all these years later, because it works. It educates the workforce, and it gets the people to serve over 107,000 airmen. And that's important. But the biggest takeaway on those workshops, that's the work side. I can't remember why, but I drove down to Dallas for this workshop. We ended up taking Tammy back with us, back to Little Rock. And for those six hours, all we did was talk about family, 
talk about work. I had two other members with us that we never put the radio on, and we thought it was odd. And the funny thing about it, Mike, is when we dropped her off to you, we all kept going and had another long hours of driving back to Michigan. But we talked about how we just all fit in. And to this day, we all talk about that still. And it just says something about who you are. Good times, real good times. Years go on, we both leave the FM world. I venture into a world of uh, the USPFO. But boy, my training brings me to a place called Camp Robinson. And I end up for four years coming to a place with Professional Education Center. I loved it. More importantly, I knew Tammy and Mike were here in Arkansas. And picking up the phone, I'll never forget, it felt like just yesterday. And then all these years of coming back here to do my training for the four years in the PFO world, learning the Army National Guard way, how to do business, these guys made me feel like family. And I will tell you from that side on, I knew Tammy, you were a very dear person. And I'm very appreciative of that because when you're on your own and you're in a different environment, and sometimes you're the only blue in a green world, it matters when you have family. That's one thing for sure. So as time goes on, I find out I'm coming to NGB to replace Colonel Don Brewer, who we both know, great guy. I pick up the phone and ask Tammy, hey, you interested in coming to NGB with me? Well, let me think about it, let me see. Sure enough, she steps up, she comes. What happens? She comes into the hardest branch that we have in FM readiness. The FM community and readiness has had challenges. She took it on on her, on her own. She rolled up her sleeves and she did what had to get done and it's probably one of the most successful readiness times we have had in our community, which is wonderful. Now as she comes on board as a division chief, I think what's interesting in this is that the things that we might not always want to talk about audits, internal controls, things like that about finding efficiencies. What's that, what I find really interesting for her is that she is that conduit that gets to the PFOs so that we can work the senior management councils to get very specific about tasks that can help the Army and Air Guard. It's an amazing process how it all gets connected. So although she's at NGB working with me, She's also helping everybody, including Arkansas. And I think that says a lot about her. So I will close with this. She's never been afraid to take on a challenge. She will always, always prepare herself to take on the hardest tasks. And most importantly, one of the reasons why I'm grateful that she raised her hand, because while we were growing up, we would always say as captains and majors, they don't know, they don't know. Well, now those they are we. And I can promise you, as the director of FM, Colonel Cully and Colonel Leon will continue to find the answers and work hard for the enterprise and do what's right. So having said that, let's continue with the ceremony. Thank you, Colonel Leon. Would Lieutenant Colonel Cully please come forward and join Colonel Leon. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand as Colonel Leon promotes Lieutenant Colonel Cully to the rank of Colonel and directs the publishing of the promotion order. Publish the order. Attention to orders. Special order AP-6. By order of the Secretary of the Air Force and direction of the President, federal recognition is extended to Lieutenant Colonel Tammy Lynn Cully she will be promoted in the Reserve of the Air Force to the grade of Colonel per 10 USC 14303, 14308, 14311, and 14316. And in 32 USC with a date of rank of and promotion effective date of 6 January 2021, authority AFI 362504 and ANGI 362504. By the order of the Secretaries of the Army and the Air Force, signed Daniel R. Hokinson, General, United States Army, Chief National Guard Bureau. Oh, wow.
Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Would Colonel Retired Montanero please join us on stage for the placing of the insignia? Thank you, Colonel Leon and Colonel Montanero. Now we will ask Buddy and Barbara, Chuck and Melinda, Michelle, Callie, and Dylan, and all of the grandchildren to please come forward for the placing of the insignia on the shirt and cap. What I did not place in the script, Sean, I'm sorry, is uh, my parents will be doing my my shirt and my sister-in-law and love, and my brother will be doing the other side. And I'd like the rest of my family to please stand around me. You got it? Thank you. Do you have the coins? I do. Do you want the coins after? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so. Where do we have another go? This one. So you take this one off. And Let Melinda take one off. Mommy can take one off. Yeah. 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 incorporate into this and there's not enough so I ask that all my family come up for this even though my parents and my brother and my sister in love are doing my shirt because any one of them could have done it and I wanted every one of them to do it um, so it's just my way of my husband didn't even come up but it's just my way. <laughs> it's just my way of just I want to acknowledge all of my family and that any one of them could do the pinning. Um, and it was just as important to me for any of them to do it. So I have a small token for each of them. So <clears throat> I don't want to seem vain, but it was just something I felt like I could share in with them. And I found kernel coins. And so I want to give each of my family one just to remember this day. So here's one. Thank you. Here's one. Here's one. Oh, you guys making it? Oh, so these are my grandkids. They're still struggling with the hat a little bit. And actually, that kind of gives me a minute. I know it would probably be part of my speech, but I'm actually going to say a little something about my eagles. So uh, I know everybody wants shiny new eagles, and uh, it's awesome, but I didn't. Um, there are many people who've helped me get to where I, I, I uh, am, and I'll acknowledge that when I, when I talk a little bit more in a minute. But I want to take this minute to say something about three very, very special people 
who honestly, um, if you, I, I couldn't be here were it not for them. Um, Colonel Montanero, I, I went to work for General Crimmins as the wing commander and Colonel Montanero as the vice commander, and I'll touch on that a little bit. Um, but they submitted me for my COE, General Crimmins. Um, it meant a lot to me that when I reached out to, Paul, to Colonel Hara to ask him to inquire about my COE, that General Crimmins kept his word about that. That was important to me. But the two of them um, were just so awesome to me. And um, so, and then Colonel Leon, um, obviously I could not be here without him. Um, he trusted in me. He invited me to come to Garbier to work for him. But my eagles, my shiny eagles, they belong to those three individuals. Um, I don't want shiny eagles. I want, I want, like Colonel Leon says, tested and true eagles. And um, it, it's an honor for me to have each of your eagles to put on my uniform. So thank, thank you to each of you for that. I really appreciate it. All right. Did you get the hat? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Love you guys. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> here you go. Okay. Here you go. Thank you. So, you're welcome, babe. Thank you all. Thanks, guys. Love you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Um, all my family can go down except for Melinda. I'd like her just to stay for one second. <laughs> I'm going that one. Let's go. So, can I get that one? Yep, right there. So I know it's it's during normally my speech that I would do this part, but uh, <clears throat> this lady, she's awesome. She is. My sister is deployed right now. I wish she could be here too, but uh, this is my sister in love. I'm so happy she's part of my family. Yeah. And uh, so much of what you see here, all the bows. So every, a lot of people helped. I don't want to take away from that. But she's the creative genius. Yep. And uh, so much of what you'll see in the reception and right here, she did for me. And so, um, you know, <laughs> we were talking about this, and she thinks I'm so special just because I'm getting promoted. <laughs> she just, she, she, she thinks it's a humongous deal. And it is. I don't want to take away from that. She's just as awesome as I am. She's just not in the military. So uh, I just want to say thank you. I think you're the best. And I wanted to acknowledge you in front of everyone because I want you to know how special and how important and how awesome you are. So thank you for everything. Thank you, Melinda, and thank you to all of Colonel Cully's family that joined in her special moment. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand. At this time, Colonel Culley's husband, Lieutenant Colonel Mike Culley, will come forward to administer the oath of office. Oh my, my technology. I state your name. I, Tammy Lynn Culley. Having been appointed a Colonel in the United States Air Force. Having been appointed a Colonel in the United States Air Force. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I'll support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge. And that I will well and faithfully discharge. The duties of the office. The duties of the office. Upon which I'm about to enter. Upon which I'm about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Thanks, babe. <laughs> Colonel Cully, ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Now, it is my pleasure, absolute pleasure, to introduce to you for the first time Colonel Tammy Lynn Cully. <laughs> okay, uh, before we do that, real quick, I just want to say a couple of thank yous because. Uh, <clears throat> I didn't write anything down, because I really did try to, and it just doesn't come to me. And quite honestly, Colonel Montanero and General Cribbins will probably tell you I operate best by the seat of my pants. It gets me in trouble a lot of time, but uh, I just tend to do better there. So the more stressed I am, probably the better I'm going to do. 
Um, I want to say thank you, General Penn, thank you. It, it really means a lot to me that you would be here. Um, it does not, I understand how busy you are. Um, we've done a lot, we've, I've had the pleasure of working with you in the past, not as the, not as TAG, but, but in NGAA, and I know what a busy person you are, and I know how busy this job must be for you, and for you to take away from Drill Weekend and come here really means a lot. So thank you so much for being here. General Perman, thank you. Same thing, I know how busy you are. Um, it really was just, I was so lucky to get to work under you. <laughs> thank you for uh, mentoring me and teaching me about leadership. Um, I, I just really learned a lot under you and Colonel Montanero, and I was just really, really lucky to get to have that job, so thank you. Wow, you too. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I haven't seen you guys in ages besides on Facebook, but it really meant a lot to me that you'd make this trip. You guys live quite a ways away, so thanks so much for coming. It means a lot to me. I can't wait to see you afterwards. Colonel Hara, oh my goodness. We've grown up together. and. Uh, you know, you've always been one of my biggest cheerleaders, and we've had some good talks, and, and you've helped me get through some tough times, and uh, you've been a great confidant, a great friend. And Elizabeth, thank you for being here. It means a lot to me that you guys would make it today. Pastor and Von Phil, wow, thanks for letting me use the church. We kind of took it over. Um, but, you know, he's been just such a spiritual mentor to me for a long time. We get to have some of the best discussions. And uh, I love those talks, so thank you. And uh, Pastor Summers, thank you. We miss doing church with you, um, but we appreciate you being here. And uh, to, let me hit some other thank yous that I don't forget. Um, <clears throat> to all the people who came here, to the Facebook Live, and uh, set that up because it took quite a few of you, thank you so much. Um, again, I know it's drill. I know how busy you are, and I just, I really appreciate you taking the time. Uh, Colonel Montanaro and Martha Ann, thank you for making the trip. Um, you know, Colonel Montanaro, from the day I went up there, said, this is going to happen for you. And I didn't go up there for that. I always made that clear. I um, always made it clear. You know, I think I started out that way, that uh, I'll think about it. I want to know that there's a promotion opportunity if I'm going to move my family. And I got to thinking about it. And, I, you know, Colonel, General Crimmins and Colonel Montanaro really taught me a lot about being on a team. It's really kind of sad I went a lot of my career being, I, I think I team played a little, but I think I was really kind of selfish too. And um, when I went to work for them, it was all about the team, all the time. And uh, I wish I got to work for you guys like 20 years ago. I think it would have changed the course of my career, but I'm so thankful that I got that. So it occurred to me that uh, when I was praying about it, the Lord really kind of impressed upon my heart of, are you really a member of a team if you, if you plant stipulations of I'll do it if this? And it's not. So I called Colonel Leon and said, if I'm going to be a part of your team, I'm going to be a part of your team. I'm coming up there no matter what happens, and I'm going to do the best job that I can for you. And that's what I did. I had no expectation. And uh, honestly, it wasn't, if it ever happened, it wasn't supposed to happen this soon. So, you know, some, some lucky breaks happened, and, and that was able to happen. Lastly, just because if I forget everything else, I absolutely cannot forget to thank David. Thank you. Beautiful voice. Um, he sang at Mike's promotion, so, you know, he's kind of a staple around here. We love his voice, and thank you for making the trip. Shauna and Christine, oh my gosh. Look, I've done a few of these, never done a colonel promotion, but my bosses will tell you I've done a few protocol deals. They're stressful. They're hard. So when someone calls you up, so Mike and I started out thinking we would just do it ourselves. We didn't want to inconvenience anybody. We, we could handle it. I've done a lot of these. We could handle it. It soon became... Obvious it was not going to work out that way. Job was too demanding. It was too too hard, too far away. There was just too much. So I call them up really kind of at the last minute and beg them to do it. I didn't even really have to beg. And uh, I could think of no other person, if Mike wasn't going to do it, that um, I would want to narrate and I would want to proffer than these two. I've worked with them for years. They're extremely professional. But more importantly, they're really old friends of mine that, I, that have helped me many, many times at work. And I've enjoyed working with them, the conversations we had, and they are just, they're extremely professional and they're just awesome. So thank you so, so much. All right, I'm gonna video you to death. I know it's a little out of the norm, but you know, um, Chief Q, I loved her. When we, uh, when she did her promotion ceremony, she said, hey, I'm sorry y'all, but this is my promotion. So, hey, I'm sorry y'all, but this is my promotion. <laughs> but truthfully, it's my last one. I know people, you know, some people won't get that, but I don't plan to stick around to pursue anything longer. This is so much more than I ever dreamed. 
and uh, I'm ready to punch. My husband and I have plans. I'm hanging out, I hope, only three more years. When my boss goes home, I'm going home. I'll give him everything I got until then. But uh, this is my last promotion, so uh, there's just some things I want to, I've been praying a lot about what to do and say, and this is kind of what I've come up with. So could you cue the video? Okay. <clears throat> so I'll try to make this part quick. First of all, I want to thank God. I honestly, um, that song always makes me cry. I shouldn't have played it, but uh, that's how I feel in life. Um, so many doors I felt like were closed to me, and um, he opened them all. So uh, at the lowest point in my life, when I felt like just nothing went right, I got a call from Colonel Montanero asking me to come to the wing staff, and everything changed. So I was leaving the state, by the way, at that time. I don't know if I ever told you that. I was actually transferring to the Missouri Guard. I was just ready to check out. So why this song means so much to me is that uh, we had, so I've been praying a lot about what to say because I've just been stumped. And uh, the Lord kind of impressed upon me like, uh, I don't want this really to be that much about me. Where we are in, I swore I wasn't saying this word here, where we are in COVID, there's a lot of people really hurting. So, um, Nobody ever thinks I hurt, because honestly, I don't really show that. Unless you're really in my circle, you don't really get it. You wouldn't have known that my career was in the tank, it, and it was. You wouldn't have known that. But uh, I still went to work every day. I still tried to be as happy as I could and do the best job I can. So I say all that to say, you just haven't seen it yet. You got to hang on no matter what. You gotta trust that God is making a way ahead of you. It might not be your way. I know I'm sound preachy, sorry. <laughs> it might not be your way. Because you know what? I didn't think this was gonna be my way. I was already, we were making plans. I actually quit my full-time civilian job. I, I retired. I deferred my retirement. And uh, I had every intention of waiting 18 months to reach my 30 years so that I could um, retire and I was ready to retire. And that's where, my, that's where my direction was going. Sad thing about that was, if I hadn't hung on, I'd been in the military 30 years and I probably would have left bitter and upset. And what a shame to give something that many years of your life and then leave not happy. <clears throat> I'm so happy. I love this. Yeah. <laughs> Colonel Montanero, General Kerman, and many others. Um, I had so many people, Colonel Hara, I had so many people who really cared about me reach out to me, my family, they're so important. I had so many people reach out to me to lift me up and just help me hold on. <coughs> and things just fell into place. So most people won't get that video. It probably doesn't seem appropriate, but it's, it's, where, I, it's where I am. And uh, I'm just so thankful. And so I know we're on Facebook Live, and so I just feel like I have to say, if you're out there and you're struggling, surround yourself by people who care about you and lift you up. And it'll, it'll work itself out. It'll all be good. I know there's probably other things I wanted to say, but uh, it's probably enough, but I will say this. Man, Dad, you remember when I enlisted and we went to Little Rock and I had to swear in? He wished he could join with me. And uh, my gosh, that was a lifetime ago, wasn't it? And look at where we are. You know, most people don't know this. I started out as a slick sleeve airman, airman basic. I had nothing. And. Uh, to get to be here, it's a blessing. And honestly, it's, 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 the other thing I want to say about that is it's nothing I've done. It's because of people who've cared for me and loved me and nurtured me and saw something in me that I couldn't see in myself. So I also want to say this, though. I talked about the side of how, where my career was and all that stuff, and you know, it sounds kind of dark, and it's really meant to be a joyous, a joyous thing. I, that's what I want to bring out of it. Be careful, though, that you own what's yours. Was, did some things happen to me that weren't right or weren't my fault? Absolutely. But was my response what it should have been? It wasn't. So you have to own what's yours, and you have to pick yourself up, and you got to have a good attitude, and you got to remember the oath that you've taken or the character that you have and the integrity that you have, and you just got to move on. That's just life. 
But you can only do that, and I can't stress enough, there are lots of people who care about you, and you've got to surround yourself by those people because those are the people who will lift you up and get you to wherever it is you need to go. Yep. So, um, if I forgot to thank anyone, I mean, obviously, thank you to my family. Uh, yeah, glad I looked at them. Man, <laughs> I, could, I do this. You know, I think every promotion ceremony, I've caught you at the end or forgot. <laughs> this is awesome. That's the other piece. I do not want to end without saying this. My husband is everything to me. And General Crimmins, when you submitted my COE, I knew that was happening. But when you took care of my husband, that meant more to me than anything you could ever have done for me. When you guys took care of my husband, that meant everything to me. Everything. You could have not promoted me and promoted him, and I would have been happy. Because most people don't know I can't be here without him. I can't. Every time we've ever moved, it's because I wanted to move, because there was something in it for me. And Mike always picked up, gave everything up, and went. And you know, I've got to work with some great senior leaders, and what I find about most of them is they have awesome spouses. Mine is no different. He is. If you know me, and if you know Mike, you know we come as a couple. We don't do anything separately. This is as much his today as it is mine. He might not be putting on the eagle, but he's, he's it. Because I can't do anything without him. I can't be where I am, and I can't say thank you enough for everything that you do for me. I wouldn't be here today. I mean, when we traveled home, I wouldn't have made it. <laughs> I told Mike, you know, 06 is get aid, so I guess you're mine now. <laughs> but seriously, babe, I can't thank you enough. Thank you. You've sacrificed so much for me, and I appreciate it. So. Um, I, I appreciate all of you being here, and, and I know I forgot to thank people. My kids have sacrificed a lot, a lot, um, and I appreciate them. And I, I, you know, my sister, I hope she's getting to watch. She's deployed. I'm so proud of you. I'm jealous. I'm jealous. I didn't know she was on here. All right, so this is my sister. You probably can't see her. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. Uh oh. Well, you can talk to her. Oh, she was trying to say. But uh, no, and my brother. Hang on, Mom. Oh. Go ahead. You're on mute, I think. You're on mute. <laughs> She's saluting me. I'm very proud of you. I love you. I love you too. All right. But uh, also, my brother. Um, I just want to say, you know, my, my brother's in law enforcement. We all serve. Thanks for raising us to be that way. We all serve, and we all love this country, and we all love the people in it. So um, thank you so much for all of you being here. I really appreciate it. And thank you, Colonel Kelly. Yes, ma'am. The men and women of the United States Air Force and the Air National Guard are proud of Colonel Kelly and look forward to working with her as she takes on her new challenges. Please join Colonel Kelly and her family for light refreshments immediately following the ceremony in the Fellowship Hall. And um, during the departure that the official part during the departure of the official party, please enjoy another video from Colonel Kelly. Thank you for everyone in attendance and watching remotely. Ladies and gen gentlemen, remain standing for the departure of the official party. Lisa, leave the lights up.